This time, the chair recognizes Dr. Ronnie Floyd, chairman of the Great Commission Resurgence Task Force, for the report. Every time I see that report and that video, it just fires me up. Because in reality, that's exactly what's happened to each one of our lives on this stage over this past year. 1,000 thank yous for giving us the privilege of doing what we believe God has called us to do. For a few moments here, I just want to talk to you out of my heart and ask you and tell you why we are recommending what we're recommending. First of all, it's because of our calling. You see, we believe God has called us to do something and that Jesus has made it extremely clear we are to go to the nations. How in the world do we not go when we have 6,426 people groups in the world who have absolutely zero witness of the gospel of Jesus Christ? How do we not go when we have 1.7 billion people that comprise those people groups that will perish without Christ one day? How do we say no to a great commission calling when, when we have six billion people in the world who need Christ out of the 6.8 billion? How do we say no when we have 258 million lost people in North America alone? I want to show you something for a moment, and it's called the Downward Trajectory of Christianity in America. Those born before 1946 is the Breezer generation. 65% of those people declare themselves as Christians, born-again Christians. You go to the next generation, the baby boomers, my generation, 35%. And then you come to the Gen X generation, 25% and 15% with the millennial generation, those born from 1980 to the year 2000. I ask you today, are we going to be content with that downward trajectory of Christianity in America? How can we be content when we are baptizing one half of the teenagers we baptized in 1972? How can we be content when we're baptizing less people even though we have 17,000 more churches, we're baptizing less people than we did in 1950. I really don't think that pleases the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, we need to return to a conviction, and the conviction is, is that Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation, that apart from faith in Him, people perish and they spend eternity in a place called hell. Years ago, there was a man who was faced with a major crisis in his own generation. The year was 1789. He was living in a country where slavery was permitted. He called for everything to change and he stood up before parliament and he literally said, we are all guilty, I am guilty. We have seen it, we know we're guilty, we need to change it. And William Wilberforce said these words, and I will never forget them. He said, having seen all this, you can choose to look the other way, but you can never say, I did not know. There are literally billions of people in the world today who are enslaved in their sin and who will perish without the Savior named Jesus Christ. And my friends today, all of us as Southern Baptists, we can choose to look the other way. But after today, you can't say that you did not know. I personally believe, and this task force believes, that change is inevitable and change is imperative. And that's why this report is calling for us to present the gospel of Jesus Christ to every person in the world and to make disciples of all the nations. I mean, that's what we are about. Amen? That's who we are as Southern Baptist. But also our cost. The cost is great. 
You see, there's a spiritual cost. We talked about that spiritual cost in great detail in our progress report. We talked about it with still a strong conviction in our final report. We talk about it in the challenges of our final report because we believe the spiritual cost has to begin with you and has to begin with me, with your church, my church, and the greatest need that we have today is a spiritual revival and awakening. We believe that that is absolutely essential. That's why in January of 2011, we are challenging every church in the Southern Baptist Convention, and we're challenging the next president who is elected today as our president in 2011. We're challenging all of our churches to come together in January to concentrate on coming back to God, on repenting of our sins, and holding solemn assemblies literally in all of our churches across the nation. But there's also a financial cost. Financial increase is imperative. If we're going to take the gospel to the nations, then financial increase cannot be an option. That's why in our report, we said that we must give as never before. We said that we must support the cooperative program as never before. We declare to you today that nothing is wrong with the cooperative program. And that is why we have said it is our primary means of financial support for the work of reaching the world nine times in component number three. It is amazing to me that one of the things talked about in our report has been pretty well absolutely just ignored. We have called upon our International Mission Board, our North American Mission Board in consultation with the WMU to establish goals of $200 million for Lottie Moon and $100 million for the Annie Armstrong offering by the year 2015, that that will become our floor of giving from that time on to soar on up higher. Last year, which was just announced last week, Southern Baptist gave $148.9 million to the most recent Lottie Moon Christmas offering. And while that is a terrific report, knowing the economic situation and challenge that we're in, Dr. Rankin informed me the other day because I said, you know, what could happen, Dr. Rankin? Would you please ask your team, what could happen if we could start meeting that goal by 2015? Dr. Rankin shared with me that because of our Lottie Moon goal falling uh, still short at 148.9, uh, that missionary personnel would have to be reduced again to 45 to 4,800 missionaries. He said, but if Southern Baptists rise to the occasion, I want you to get this vision today. We will remove restricting the appointment of missionaries, we will reinstitute the short-term missionary program, and we will be able to add 1,000 missionaries resulting in engaging 150 plus unreached, unengaged people groups who have no churches, no Christians, and no missionaries right now. 